Hi everyone, and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Crochet. This is a beginner series of videos and patterns that help you learn the very basics of crochet and how to create really simple, fun patterns that you're actually going to like and use. To start with, I wanted to show you a little bit about how to create the basic stitches. So that's what this lesson is about today. This is the very first lesson, and it's going to show you how to create the first knot and start a foundation chain where you will build the rest of your project from. So I'm going to be using, for all of my tutorials, I'm going to be using this 8mm crochet hook from Clover and a big ball of chunky yarn. This is a thicker yarn and I like it better for beginners and to show tutorials because you can see what I'm doing more clearly and it doesn't split as easily as some other yarns and some thinner yarns do. So let's get started. This is actually Knit Picks the Mighty Stitch I think. Um, so let's get started. Okay so the first thing you want to do is get your yarn and get a little bit of length so that it's nice and loose coming from the ball. This end, the end of your yarn here is called a tail yarn. It's called the tail end. And then the rest of it, whatever is coming from the ball and whatever you're working with is called the working yarn. So we're going to start by making our slip knot. And the slip knot is what you use to first secure that first loop on your yarn and then make the rest of your project from. So to do this, I hold the yarn in my hands like this and I cross the tail end over the working yarn so it forms that ribbon shape. Now I take my fingers and I reach through this loop and grab this working yarn. So just reach through, grab the yarn. And I can pull the loop through and I have a knot. And slip knots are great because if you tug on the working yarn right here, you can make the loop smaller. Or if you pull on the loop, you can make the loop larger. It's a really great way to start a project. So now you take your hook and we're going to start the actual foundation chain. So right now my loop is really big compared to my hook size. So I'm just going to pull in the working yarn and pull it so it gets snug up to the hook. You don't want it to be too tight, but you do want it to be snug. You want it to stay where it is. Okay, so now let's make a foundation chain. The foundation chain is the first row that you work into and it looks a lot like a braid and it's really really simple to do. All you need to do is first hold your hook in one hand and your yarn in the other. I like to hold my knot right here. Just hold it just so that I'm keeping it secure and it's not sliding around too much. It also gives me a nice place to just kind of know where I'm at. And I hold my yarn and a lot of different ways so do whatever is comfortable for you but I like to have it tucked somewhere around my pinky so I can hold it and it doesn't get loose and then over my index finger so that I can control it when I'm yarning over and moving it around. I can use my index finger to do that. So to start our, our first chain you're going to hold your hook and your yarn like this. Bring your yarn over the hook so it's wrapped around the top of it and then bring your hook down through the loop bringing that yarn with you and it's going to create this v-shaped link and that is your first chain and that's all you need to do you just need to continue bringing your yarn over the hook and then through the loop that's currently on the hook so that's two. I'm going to continue doing that until you have a chain that's about as long as you want it to be. I'm going to go for 10 just to show you. So right now we have three. One, two, and three. And as I work, I like to move up on my hold so that I'm not working all the way down here. It's fine if you are, but it gives you a little bit more control when you're holding it closer. When you're just starting out, this chain might be a little bit uneven. You might have some places that are really, really tight together, 
and some places are really large loose loops. For that, you just need to really practice and get the hang of it. Once you learn how to do it and you know how to create this stitch, this chain stitch, the rest of it will come easily. You'll just need to like kind of get used to holding it and continue practicing until you're kind of, you know, better at it. And then your chains will be more even. So here's my chain so far. Let's see how many stitches I have. And you can count these stitches by counting this, this V shape that it makes. That's how you know how many you have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay? Here are our ten chain stitches. Now I want to take a second to kind of just talk about this chain for a second. I'm going to take my make my loop really big. I take my hook out so it's not in the way. Okay. So here's our chain. There's a couple different parts to this chain. You have these two legs. You have these two legs of the chain. There's one leg and the other leg. And you can see they, they're what make the V shape. On the back of it, you also have this bump right here. And this is the back of the chain. A lot of time when you're working in the, in the rows later on, you're going to be going into the center of this chain. You're going to go into the middle of the V. And you're going to get your hook to go underneath this front, this loop, and then this bump. Then you only have one loop on the bottom side. Sometimes though, you'll also be working into the back of the bump instead. When you work into the back of the bump, you have a cleaner edge that looks like this. But for the most part, especially in the beginning, you're just going to be working into the center of the chain stitch like this. Just going underneath this back loop and the bump. Other times, you're only going to be going under the back loop only or through the front loop only. Your pattern will tell you which one to do, but here is the first 10 chains. Okay, so continue practicing this. You can make 10 or you can make 20. You can make the stitch as long as you want, but just continue practicing it. And the more you practice, the better and more even it'll be. So once you, once you have your first 10 chains, we can move on to the next, next lesson, and I'll show you how to work your first single crochet stitch.